Twin Towers. Post September 11, many good people were seized by this satanic snare. The trap of blame. We the people and the soldiers and the leaders became batteries in the matrix. Believing ourselves to be sovereign avengers, we plugged into a subversive system. Trusting the popular narrative, our minds and our American values were compromised. We emboldened the matrix and supercharged the mothership, made of mass, media, naval destroyers, aircrafts, tanks, and Humvees, figuratively a Death Star. The Death Star represents propaganda married to military superiority. We the people never looked into the mirror to confront our own evil. Instead, we looked outwards to apprehend an alleged foe that just attacked our king and our country. On that dreadful day, a diversity of peoples, of diverse religions, became the twisted and torn cadavers amidst a terrorist attack. The blast zone fatalities barely registered. It was the roasting workers who jumped to their deaths and our vulnerability that shocked our senses. And years later, it was the audiophile documentaries that broke our hearts and reopened the wounds when tower workers made calls to loved ones moments before they perished. And we paid them no respect. The feds swept their pulverized bones under the rug, and the people's will fit perfectly into the monster's plan, as leaders pressured the Republic to impetuously launch a devastating offensive. But against who? The eastern enemies of freedom? The adversaries of our values, enumerated as life, liberty, and happiness? Of course. And while the bombs over Baghdad thundered, Apophis clapped. As Abrams and armored trucks moved on our enemies across the world, we consumed plenty of conspiracy. While the military campaign named, quote, Operation Enduring Freedom proceeded, freedom withered. Suspicion grew and flourished against the Muslim, who was the new Negro of the 21st century. Irrational and unwarranted distaste was directed towards brown or Arab people everywhere. And the monster was happy. The serpent coiled comfortably onto his throne and smiled in their distress. Religion of Liberty Like a social glue, liberty is supposed to be our national unifier, a means to bind peoples of different cultures and persuasions. Popular thought equates liberty as another word for freedom. They are similar but not synonymous. Spiritually, liberty is the right to believe what you want, and socially, liberty is the right to be wrong. The liberty to do what you want meets at the intersection of law and order. We are only free to live within the law the Republic has produced. Hence, if we do not like the law, we therefore have the liberty to change the law. Liberty ensures your voice will be heard until your beliefs are adopted or your opponents postpone you. Meaning, in a Republic, any idea can eventually win. That is the ultimate caveat, when the blessing of liberty does not always fit your paradigm. America's parties, peoples, and opinions will come and go and will win and lose, but a republic will never lose, unless, of course, you lose the republic. Liberty is the foundation of a republic. Here we have debates, elections, and due process. Hearings, legislative sessions, prosecutions, and investigations. The success of liberty demands great fidelity and sacrifice. The practice of walking out liberty is toilsome, but like exercise, it is painfully invigorating. The Star Wars sagas hold a sacred place in the hearts of Americans. So reflect back to those scenes. Remember when the diversities of characters join together to discuss their collective fate. The movie scripts are holy writings, but most importantly, they remind us of that which is holier. 
the preamble, constitution, and bill of rights. These are the holy texts of the United States. This is our collective creed. A ritual for many and a cult for some, understanding liberty is everyone's calling. And in exchange for citizenship, refugee status, or asylum, these documents are the supreme law. They are sacred, whether you like them or not, whether you understand them or not. American liberty is a lifestyle, and, like a holy text or religion, we should seek to understand and uphold them as pure and undefiled as possible, insofar that we interpret the text even to the benefit of our rivals, extending them as graciously and liberally both foreign and and domestic enemies, unhesitatingly to those predisposed to destroy or rebuke us. Liberty is the freedom to defend yourself and prosecute your enemies, but it comes with an unconditional mandate to not inhibit the defense of your enemies or the prosecution of your friends. It really goes against the grain of that little voice in our heads from a prior chapter titled, Evil Twin. All this considered, liberty becomes a very unpopular practice. We all want the benefits, but our evil twin makes it hard to grant them to others. These rights and responsibilities that come naturally with American citizenship come very unnatural in our human condition. Our natural depravity leads to multiple interpretations of these holy texts, and the disagreements that arise render liberty as a religious practice of its own. Liberty is indeed a religion. It is the root religion of the Republic, which provides growth and space for all inferior religions. America is the most sought-after country, so in a literal sense, religious liberty is the most popular and most practical religion of mankind. The risks and rewards the riches, and the passionate rivalry that liberty conjures makes the mention of the word as sweet and effervescent as the sound of our own names. That beautiful L word, like Luke Skywalker. Liberty, that word which follows indivisible with and precedes that necessary yet rather obnoxious and justice for all.